Hey everyone, Sam Signorelli, HOM Fencing. Welcome back to ICANS Armory today. Not an armory video repair wise, but a kind of informational one to show people what the inside of the reels look like. A lot of people have never seen a reel, it's some kind of magical device. We go through the three primary ones for Vero, Leon Paul, and Omen, and to show you how the insides look so you can see how to do repairs on them later on. Stand by. Okay, so here we have my favorite of the three, the Vivero, otherwise known as the pizza box for the obvious shape. Um, this is a very, very good reel, very easy to work on. Uh, Vivero did a lot of good job as far as uh, making it repairable. There are a couple issues that aren't repairable easy, still easy than other ones. Here we go. It's a nice metal casing. Here's where the plug is. Uh, number one is a spring here that has actually been a cushion. There's a braking system inside, I'll show you in a second, but if it's working properly, uh, when the reel is retracting, if you let go of it, it'll slow down, it'll come in here, hit, the spring will compress a bit, and it won't jerk the cable inside the plug head. So let's open this up to what the inside looks like. I can have, when you do this kind of work, is a magnetized dish and a power drill. Great to speed things up when you have the power drill. Done. Put that over. And here's the inside of a Vero. Whee! So we have a big drum here. Uh, it's it's a very, very large drum, which means the cable isn't really compressed or rather bent really tightly. This is the brake right here. And it's very, very loose. So when the wheel is spinning around real quick to retract, this flies up and comes into contact with the underside of the lid. You can see the right here, the lines, where it rubs against the lid and it slows things down so it doesn't slam back into the housing at a whole lot of speed. One thing I like about Favero's is the ease of repair, especially if you're doing a cable replace. In fact, this one will have the cable replaced at some point in the week. I have the cable on order, and then I'll film me doing that. Um, the springs are in a pack of three mounted underneath the, the drum here. Uh, and these wires here are soldered to one of each of the springs. There's three springs, each one carries one of the lines. Uh, the casing itself is not part of the circuit like it is in the Omen. Uh, it goes directly from the spring to the circuit board here, to the ends of the cable, to that. On the underside, it goes to the back side here where it has a little, little with a connector for the four wheel. I'll show you that in a second. But this circuit board is very, very easy to work on. Everything's exposed, I have plenty of room to work. Um, I have a solder pads where the wires go. Also wire pads go here. Uh, Replace the cable is very easy. Uh, the back side looks like this. Here's the uh, where the floor cable goes in. And that's where the wires come out underneath the drum and they were connected right by, there, right by a, a solder connection. Um, replacing the spring is a bit more of a pain. Uh, it's always easier if you have a problem with a Vero spring to replace the whole spring pack. Don't replace this one the problem is you have to unsolder <clears throat> these three wires, one's going to each of the spring, lift it out. There's not a whole lot of room here to put it back on. There are also nuts here holding it in place. The first time I ever saw this done, Donald Clinton helped me. It took him an hour and a half to get it back on. Um, if I have to do a spring replacement, I'll show that, the technique that Mike Mergen showed me. Um, that makes it a lot easier to put the thing back on, though it's still irritating as hell. Um, the, when I replace the cable, though, one thing you'll see inside here is that little clamp right there where the wires clamp down. Now notice there's no strain relief knot here. Whenever I put a, put, replace a cable in Favero, I always put a strain relief knot in. Why? Because an incident happened at 2012 Nationals where a fencer had pushed his opponent to the back end of the strip and then he flashed. The real cable ran out. He kept running because it was a jerk and it ripped out the cable through the clamp here and destroyed the circuit board. And that reel was down for the tournament because absolute and BG didn't have a spare circuit board for things to bring them. Uh, in fact, Ted Lee was not amused. He was almost going to give the guy a black card, but he been knocked out, so it was kind of pointless. Um, as what the Favero inside looks like, like I said, when I replace this cable later in the week, I will film that one and show you how I do it. It's a little involved, but it's actually very, very easy. And now I go to my uh, next f next uh, least favorite down the list, which is the Leon Paul. Stand by. Okay, next the uh, next one down my list of favorites, the Leon Paul. We jokingly call the snail reel for an obvious reason. Uh, this one has had the Leon Paul head replaced with the Vivero uh, because Leon Paul heads are very difficult to work on and the retaining belt doesn't fit on all cords. Um, this one is different in that, number one, this is the nut that holds everything together. I'm going to take off the front side. 
I'm not going to get the back side off where the springs are. I'll explain one in a second. Take this knurled knob off. Put these parts aside. I'm going to take off the casing. Pops right off. It's an aluminum, aluminum uh, cast aluminum case. So here's the inside of Leon Paul. This is the drum. It's smaller than the Favero, so the wire's tight a little tighter. Um, this is a little different in that the springs do not carry any of the charge. The springs are not part of the circuit in any way, shape, or form. They're only there to wind the reel up. This one has what's called a brush and commentator system right here, which ideally pops off. Hang on a second. There it goes. Pops right off. So here are the brushes. And you can see one for each line here. Uh, they are connected by a circuit board in the back to the uh, floor cord connection. This is for grounding. And there's A, B, and C line. Uh, these, when they're on top of the spindle here, are in contact with these spots here, the commutator. And these do not rotate. This part rotates. So when it spins around, uh, it's always in contact. Ideally, it should be. And the wire connections are just right there. Solder connection with a screw back up right there. They're all three wires. And then they, this cable goes through around out to the out to the um, plug head. Uh, the spring side is a bit more a pain in the butt. Uh, I do not like opening this, the spring side of a Leon Paul, so I will not do it here. The problem I have with this, this by with the Leon Paul, by the way, is uh, sometimes the, as it's going on here, the you see where the commentator was not spread out too much, and these are not going to make contact with the, with the commentator, so I'll push the brushes back in a bit. Also, they may touch each other like that and have a, like this one here is going to have a, a BC short if I don't straighten out that way. Now they're all separate. It's one reason I don't like this very much. Uh, these designs really should be built with the least amount of problems built into them, and sometimes they aren't. Okay, there's that down. Good. Put the casing back on. Let's see, there's the top. Wind it up. It goes down the spindle. There it goes. And then I'll explain why I don't want to open the back side up. As I said, the springs are not part of the circuit. Their only purpose is to wind the, uh, the drum up. There are three about that big spring packs. Uh, unlike Favero, they're not sealed together. They are loose. If you're not careful, handing them as they're separate springs, the cop may come off and go shooting across the room and then much swearing and, and consternation uh, results. Um, they are nested together back to back, and as one of them winds up and it completes winding up, then it starts turning the second one and it turns the third one. Um, they're on this side, other side of the spindle. They see me slip over the spindle, and that works fine. Uh, but as I said, I don't want it to seem to explode. It's fixed it. I don't want it to, so I'm not going to open it up and take it apart. Um, that's one reason I don't like the Liam Pauls, is the springs are very difficult to work with, for me at least. Um, it is a reliable system if the brush and commentator is making good contact. If it's not, then it's not going to work as well. Uh, now let's go on to my least favorite of all, the Ullman Turtle. Right. Okay, so here we have my least favorite of the three, the Ullman, the turtle reel. You know, if it's an all-star reel turtle, it's the exact same thing. Only difference is all-star's red, Ullman's blue. They're the exact same reel, basically the same company. So this one... Uh, I have replaced the cable head with a Favero, which is much easier to work on. The Omen is much bigger. It has a lot more screws in it. Uh, the wire is connected by virtue of a solder lug where the wire is soldered to, and the ring end is actually is actually uh, attached by a screw to a little screw in the face here, um, which is a, a typical formula receiving port you'd see on, on any, any Omen body, uh, any Omen um, uh, socket. Uh, but there's so many screws to get involved, it's, it's a pain in the butt to work on. Um, let's look at the interior of this. I've already taken the screws off the bottom. Voila! The inside of the infamous Omen reel. Now one thing you'll notice right away, unlike the uh, Favero, is that the circuit board is small and hidden. There it is. There's my thumb. So you can see there ain't a whole lot of room to work there. Uh, if I have to replace the cable, which I did on this one, uh, I have to remove the Merc attack here by virtue of this pole being the side because there's two screws holding it in. Move it aside. I have to take off these three screws on top, lift the whole drum off it after, of course, detensioning the spring. And then I can get to the, where the bearing is because two wires are coming here from the bearing that make it rotate. The ground line is through the spring. So replacing the cable is a pain. Uh, there's no room to work in it at all. I mean, there's literally not even a full square inch of, of room to work in this. And it's so easy 
to ground to the reel. I've done that before when I first started working on these things. It's just a major pain in the butt. I would rather work on two dozen Faveros than one Ullman, to be very, very honest. <clears throat> um, the best part about this is the Mercury switch because there is no interruption uh, between the A and the B line unless it's a break from the connector post to the wire. As I said, the ground line is through the, is through the spring, then through the case of the machine. Uh, these are the ones you typically see at NAX. These are the ones that have been in the Army crate for years. Um, I keep hoping and hope against hope they'll go to Faveros, which are much easier to uh, to repair. Um, I do not even sell Omens unless somebody specifically asks for them. I prefer Faveros because they're, again, easier to fix and, and uh, they're much better designed. They also don't fall down the strip like a lost puppy like Omens do. You can be advancing down, and yet you're at, you're at your opponent's meter line, and the reel's right behind you sometimes, but not secured properly. So anyway, those are the three uh, reels, uh, the three common ones out there, and my, obviously, opinionated thoughts on them. As always, happy armoring.